Now, normally when I think of Enso pens, I think of these types of pens that are clean, simple, minimalist, not too flashy. Well, that all changes with what's inside this box. And in fact, to get a little flash with the Enso pens, I took the matters into my own hand. It all started with the Enso Italia in titanium. It was sort of this color here on the clip for the whole pen originally. But I decided to uh, light it up with a flame, dump it in some acid, and come out with this sort of cool result on the titanium. Even went a step further, did it on the nib. You can watch my videos if you want on that one. Then I liked that, so I thought let's do a bit of a shinier version of that with the pocket pen. So I guess Carlo from Enso Pens there said, you know what, hold my beer. And he teamed up with Jonathan Brooks, and Jonathan whipped up a special batch of his primary manipulation number four resin. Are you ready for this? Look, whoa, it's a stunner. Just an absolutely eye-popping, jaw-dropping pen. It's even equipped this time with a gold nib. This is a 14-karat Bach nib with the Enso branding on there as well. I'm going to go through this quick, give you the quick details, because this is a limited edition. Uh, Carlos sent me this pen for review, so this is super amazing. Uh, and there's only a few left, but there's a 20% off right now. If you use the code HOLIDAYS22, you get 20% off. And if, it, if this pen isn't for you, he's got some other pens on there. Whole site wide, he's got that as well. But let's just jump into this real quick before they're all gone. And I'll hit it with some glam shots because you know we got to do it with that. We'll do a writing sample, tell you all about the pen, and uh, give you my final thoughts. Now look, I do have some sort of fancy pens, some vintage ones and new ones, and I think these looks pretty sharp here, but then you just lay this puppy on top, and uh, yeah, that's a whole other level. So let's tell you all about this pen. This is the Enso Puma Minimalist. I have one, and this was in the Japanese Ebonite. You can see, uh, you know, same, same, but very, very different. This one, it's very nice. I, I, this is a great pen. I've been using this a bunch. I also have it in the pocket too. It's got the blackout Bach nib on there, okay? But this thing is absolutely gorgeous. As far as dimensions, the total pen from tip to tail here like this, it's 140 millimeters. You pop off the cap, it's 127 and a half. The uh, widest part of the pen here, right around here and here, 15 millimeters, okay? The grip is quite nice, it's quite long. So, you know, these threads don't bother you whatsoever. Very smooth, not intrusive whatsoever, but just below the threads to the bottom here, it's a 24 millimeter long section and has a taper that goes from 12 and a half millimeters and the narrowest part about 10.7. So ultra comfortable. I have a big pen, you can post it, you know, I put it on sort of gentle and it's there, but it, it kind of, it kind of wiggles. It's not really a posty pen, but oddly enough, I, I thought this pen when I first got it in, uh, you know, the Ebonite version that it was a little too small at that way, but it actually works just fine. I don't need to post this pen whatsoever. You can, if you want to, but on its own, it's got a little bit of thickness to it. So it's quite nice. It's a lightweight pen, 16 grams like so pop off the cap, the main body here, you got 12 and a half without ink. Uh, if you ink it up, it takes uh, cartridges, your standard international short cartridges. It also it comes with one, also comes with the uh, Schmidt converter as well. So maybe add a gram if you ink it. And you can see right down here, if the focus wants to focus, you have an O-ring, okay? So you can actually eyedropper this. It does come uh, with some silicone grease. If you screw out the nib unit, there's some silicone grease. They say there's a little bit in there, I don't see it. But if you are gonna eyedropper this, you know, I'll put just a little dibby dab on there as well. And they say the threads are specially designed. You can find all the details on Enso.com. Um, designed just to keep the uh, the ink from flowing out of there too. But a little extra seal, and then you would have, you know, just have massive uh, ink capacity on there as well. But just, you know, it's tough to even do this review because I just, I just look at the pen through the camera as I'm doing this. It's so distracting because it's just absolutely lovely. Just to get a visual reference, we got a few pens for a size comparison. This is a Faber Castell Hexo, Faber Castell Emotion. We get the Leonardo Memento Zero standard size and a Monteverde Ritma. We are caps off, so you can see it's a decent sized pen. It's a touch longer than the Leonardo and the Ritma, so it holds in there. It's a good size pen.
So some of the fine little details on here, let's show you how many turns to uncap. It's just one turn. So we'll use that little swirly bit there for a reference and boom, one turn. So like the machining on here is absolutely perfect and exquisite. Uh, these threads on here are like non-intrusive and they're really done well. There's obviously there's no burrs or nothing like this on the pen, but I got out the microscope because this camera won't focus worth a damn um, to give you some close-ups just so you can see some what the stuff looks like under the microscope it's got some depth to it and and just this beautiful sparkle in the sunlight it looks phenomenal this is just in a little office here but like in sunlight the thing just explodes with color especially if you catch the golden hour you get that gorgeous color of the sun it is a very thin material so you can uh, especially at the cap here where it goes over top. So if you look here, uh, it's a little tough to see, but um, there is a step that's down in there that seals against the end of the section. So it seals quite nice. I even took the pen out today and uh, I guess the room the pen was in was a little bit cold. There was a touch of condensation on the nib. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing, right? So the, uh, the moisture in the air is condensing and gathering on the nib because it's sealed so well. So that's nice. But it is a, a fairly thin wall right here on the edge, as you can see. And, you know, it, even like, you know, I'm not going to go hard, I'm not going to crush it, but it's a little bit, uh, you know, the material does have some give to it. So I don't think that's going to crack or break, but, you know, don't crush it because it probably will. But uh, just be aware of that. It's, a, you know, this isn't a pen you're just going to chuck in your pocket with your keys, obviously. <laughs> but while I had the microscope out, I did notice something on here. So when I inked up the pen, actually, well, even before I inked it, you know, I really started inspecting things. So the logo here, we can see it's got the Enso, which is quite nice. This is done with a laser, but I felt put my finger on it and it feels kind of like a cat's tongue. So I busted out the microscope uh, to give it a look. There's some close-ups as you can see on the screen. And so I relayed this information to Carlo to let him know. I said, hey, I don't know if you had a really close look, but it looks like the power was too high on that laser. So what's happening there you see is the power is too high and too long. So there's just too much energy going into here and it's gold. So it's going to conduct, it's thermally conductive quite well. And uh, it's, it. That effect you see on the edges, it's almost like welding splatter, right? So too much energy comes in, some of the gold uh, essentially like liquefies and then gathers on the edges. Now that's under mega magnification. You can't see that on the pen normally, but I just want to show him and it does raise the edges and he says, oh, geez. So uh, he was actually very thankful. I pointed out to them, he's, you know, and uh, he's going to be taking care of that as well. But uh, just so you know, if you do wipe it off, you'll probably get maybe just a bit of tissue paper. So when you ink it, you might get a little tissue paper grabbing on there as well. So it's obviously got the looks, it's got the gold, but how does it write? So let's put in some cool ink. This is the Private Reserve Neon Blue. I thought I got to kind of have a bit of a bright flashy ink to go with this. I didn't want to do the Super Sheeners because those things just leave a mess. So yeah, I think this might go sort of well with it, make it maybe kind of pop here. So I'm not going to eyedropper this. I'm just going to ink this up like normal and then we'll start the writing sample. So one little tip, if you want to avoid any uh, kind of tissue fibers from getting in there, instead of like kind of rubbing and wiping it off, just, you know, you can kind of roll the nib a little bit just to get that off. And then that way it's just going to sort of dab and not uh, tear off any fibers and get them stung on the logo. So the writing with this pen, it's, it just feels great in the hand. The gold nib, you know, you can tell a difference, you know, uh, a really great steel nib is great, but, uh, yeah, this nib, at least with this pen, it just matches it because it's a very, like, it feels quite smooth in the hand. It's a light pen and this nib is just buttery smooth, really nice, fine point, which is my style, but has a little bit of bounce to it. Now, when I first got the pen, I, you know, I inspect pens like crazy and I checked the nib and I saw the tying gap and it was, it was tight. And so, you know, that isn't kind of uncommon, unfortunately for Bach nibs. Now how nibs are made, you will have these pieces stamped out like flat 
and then there's progressive stamping on the nibs so it slowly takes shape into the what you see now the tipping gets welded on and then they cut the slit but you got to think about that of when you're progressively stamping that little piece of metal gold or steel it's going from flat and doing this and so what's happening and then you're welding you're getting internal stresses built up and then you cut a slice down the middle the tines are typically going to want to do this come together and you know so i let him know about that and you know along with the logo as i mentioned and same with the tine gap and he goes you know we we check the pens but obviously he goes it, it's it slipped through so he says they're going to tighten that up to make sure they're catching that now what I did write with the pen, it it was a drier than this, and I am gonna I'll do a separate video. I'll pop the nib out. I'll just keep it on a separate video so people can search it and find it. You know, I have done ones adjusting tines and the gaps on nibs, no problem. It you know can take like thirty seconds and you repair it. But I thought I'll do it. It's a gold nib, so let's just keep it separate because people freak out with gold. Um, but for gold nibs just a little opening up of the tines you really don't have to do too much all i did actually because i haven't even done that yet is i just wrote with a little bit of firmer pressure so this is very light pressure here you can still it's it's even darker than it was you know if i just use the weight of the pen it's writing and this is like a 16 gram pen right so that's almost no weight but what i did is i just wrote a little bit firmer um, you know, for a few hours. I haven't had the pen for long. I'm putting the video up really quick. I know his stuff is really great. Normally I like to do a pen for like a week, but if I wait a week, these are all going to be gone <laughs> anyways. So I've been using it for like a day here nonstop. And I just put a little bit more pressure than normal. And that alone, because it's gold and it, it you know, it wasn't way, way off, it was enough to open it up. So just even if I go very light pressure, uh, you know, you're getting some flow. To me, it's still a touch dry, but with mega light pressure, you can still pull off a mango chutney. Uh, you know, might miss a touch, but yeah, if, if you had to, if you get a nib that's a bit like that, it's a little bit too dry, just a little bit of firm pressure for a few days, and that should open right up. But if that's not enough, I'll have a separate video to talk all about that. So go to enso.com, okay? I just looked right now, there are nine pens left, <laughs> right? They go for $2.95. There is the code HOLIDAYS2022. That takes off uh, 20%, okay? So now that would be, what, two thirty-five, if my math in my head here is correct. So that's, you know, that's a significant savings on a pen like this. Now, again, uh, you know, even with nine left there's a good chance they're going to be gone pretty darn quick i asked carlo it, you know these are small batches of rods that are made it, it takes time the you know to do these resins that jonathan brooks does it's an expensive and slower process so they can only do small batches at a time um so far he's like it's pretty good reception so you know keep an eye out if these are gone and this is something you want to look at or your funds right now or just like, i know it's christmas time you're like there's no way i can do something like that but i'd love to keep an eye out on the site i'll do my best to put updates on my instagram or even here on the youtube channel little posts here and there if there's more that are up he's thinking that he would like to do this again in 2023 so if you miss the boat you know you missed it this round but i imagine not going to guarantee you but just from talking with carlo it sounds like they'll do this again so the closest to one of those fancy resin pens was this one i got this live in you pen and you know i think it was a hundred maybe 120 bucks with a steel nib it's not you know there's nothing wrong with it but it, it, it hasn't really wowed me or, or done too much for me uh performs okay this one here though gold nib and look i mean that's just a whole other level so that will fancy up any pen collection every day of the week so here i was thinking i'm all big boss fancy guy for doing a cool titanium amidized job on these pens and then he teams up with jonathan brooks and he pulls out this ridiculous resin i don't know how you do what you do jonathan brooks but just keep on doing it. It's literally just magic and wizardry. Look at that pearlescence that's in there. So I think this is a great collaboration that they did. So I hope they continue to do this and bring pens like this to the pen world. Um, like I said, I brought up these issues to Carlo right away. He responded right away and says, hey, you know what? 
Thank you for pointing that out. We will tighten up our belt and take care of that stuff because we want them to be as perfect as possible. So obviously a big thank you to Carlo over at Enso for sending me this pen to review and to Jonathan Brooks for uh, being super creative and doing cool stuff like this. And everyone who's watching, big thanks. The channel's been growing like crazy. So uh, that's great. Love to hear from you in the comments. The reason it's also growing is because some folks hit the little subscribe thing. That's just a nice thing to do, man. Come on, we'll catch you next time.